Hello, and thank you for joining us today on the Gentle Art of Crushing It show, where we focus on learning and sharing with our listeners all there is to know about how to create success in our lives. This show stands on the shoulders of giants. Our mission is to empower and inspire our listeners to create the life of their dreams whilst having a blast in the process. Let's celebrate life together. Welcome to the show. Today we have the pleasure of sitting down and chatting with Jason Drees. Jason is a husband, father of four boys, entrepreneur, author, speaker, and performance coach based in Austin, Texas. With over 5,000 hours and more than 10,000 coaching sessions delivered in his career, Jason has an uncanny ability to rewire the mindsets of those he works with to unlock unprecedented results. Jason's ever-expanding understanding of the power of mindset can continues to push his clients to tap into their full potential and experience extraordinary growth in all areas of their lives. Without further ado, let's introduce Jason Trees. Hey, Jason, thank you so much for joining us today. And um, so please just tell us a little bit about yourself and, you know, include something interesting that most people wouldn't know about you. Um, <laughs> thanks, Doug. I'm happy to be here. My name is Jason Dries. I'm a performance coach. Um, a specialty is mindset and I help people do impossible things. That's what I do. And one thing that's, um, let's see, interesting, <coughs> excuse me, bless you. Um, well, one interesting thing about me is that this summer I bought a boat hoist. <coughs> wow. Double bless you. Yeah, you man. never know where those are going to come from. Never know. Mm -hmm. I bought a, a boat slip with a boat hoist for a parking space on Lake Travis that led to a 70% increase in my business revenue in four weeks. That is a uh, crazy <laughs> awesome. And so can you um, just share with us a little bit more about how that, you know, created this 70% increase. And I'm sure there's a whole lot more uh, that came out of that. Well, without telling you the 20 minute version, I'll tell you the two minute version. We had a boat, we moved to Texas and our boat wasn't big enough. We wanted a bigger boat, but we didn't have a place to put it because we were in these stacks. So I wanted to get a slip to put it, to shop for a bigger boat, but the slip that was available had a hydro hoist in it, which cost like $10,000. And I didn't want to buy it, but I did. And I literally couldn't stop thinking about it. And I, and I didn't know why I kept thinking about it, but I eventually bought it, had some freak out moments in the middle, then bought a new boat and a bunch of things. But in the process of spending more money than I thought I should be spending, I had a breakthrough idea that my excitement was leading me in the right direction, even though it was causing me to spend more money than I thought I had. So instead of saying, taking the perspective of saying, I can't afford this, I took the perspective of life is pulling me to a higher financial level. So that means there's more money there that I haven't seen yet. And then three days later, I came up with the idea for my 10X program and I doubled, implemented, created, launched and filled that program within three weeks from then, from the initial boat, boat hoist part. And then ended up to grow, growing my business revenue by 70% in about wow. four weeks. Yeah, I love it. And <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. And I really like, because you talk a lot about that, about where our feelings can, can guide us. We have an inner guidance, right? And I actually mm -hmm. I have a friend, uh, Travis, he lives out here near me. <laughs> Um, who did the 10x program and he had a lot of great things to say about it so it yeah. it rolls apparently i haven't got the chance to do it but uh hopefully we'll do it and uh no i i love that though it's great great insight as well um but um that's kind of speaking about the inner guidance there i think a little bit in trusting your excitement and expansion yeah so absolutely yeah i love that um let me ask you this jason and and before i kind of go any further i just wanted to um, share with everybody that you know this few minutes that jason is, is sharing with us for starters he's an incredibly generous person um and also if you hadn't heard of um, jason then i just strongly encourage you to look into him look into his teachings it's kind of like i told him the other day st five minutes of what he has to share is like turning on a fire hose of mindset mind-blowing you know mind expansion mm -hmm. and so you know i'm just so grateful that you're here um, but let me ask you this, you know, what would you say is one of the most, um, you know, valuable lessons that you uh, learned from, from that experience? Um, 
with with which experience like getting to who i'm at today yeah the experience of actually um you know the the boat hoy story and how you followed your excitement to create more income and the okay the what i've learned one of the most important lessons is and this kind of goes with my big lesson a few years ago was to work with life when you work with life it can bring you things that is far more amazing than you could ever dream of. So, because I spent years ignoring life and saying, this is how it's gonna be. And I got mediocre results for a long time. And it wasn't until I finally started working with life and seeing what I was getting and adapting to it versus just bl blanket statementing, oh, this is what's gonna happen. Um, that's when it started to really unfold better than I can imagine. Yeah, no, I, I think that's that's awesome. And what I hear you sharing a lot, teaching about is, um, you know, really trusting life, trusting it to unfold. Mm -hmm. And I'm similar. My story is similar. I, you know, when I was a, a late teenager, I felt like I was doing that and I was having a lot of fun and mm -hmm. I really felt on fire and I felt the certainty about my future, even though I didn't know how to make it happen. I felt great about it. Yeah. And then I worked hard the next like 20 years ish to just, you know, shut down my emotions Mm -hmm. force my will upon you know the universe or life itself and in, in itself and it didn't really work for me you know mm -hmm. so but uh love that let me ask this um would you mind telling us you know about one of the incredibly difficult experiences that you've walked through and what you uh learned from the experience or you can share multiple if you want incredibly difficult experience um one of the most difficult experiences i had was my first startup 986 incorporated which we made we designed and manufactured race car driver cooling suits um i raised startup funding we had some products um you know that product um that company we managed to sell the company to, uh, to a momo italy an italian racing company That's awesome. um, so they actually we sold the IP to them and we thought we were going to make it out alive, um, but they flopped the integration and just let it die. And I ended up getting sued by one of the investors. And, um, and that lawsuit led to a lot of challenges for my business partner and more challenges to me, but actually that lawsuit was kind of the foundation of who I am today because um, when we, when we were, you know, I wasn't making a lot of money at the time and I was being sued by somebody who was rich with a returning attorney, with a rabid attorney who billed by the hour. Um, and I was literally having like panic attacks every time my like attorney called, this was like 2014. And, and, and that, one of the first times I actually discovered my belief change process was my own getting into alignment with deal, working with my attorney. So I stopped having panic attacks. It was like, I literally, that's where I discovered my belief change process that day. And, <clears throat> And I also gave it a meaning in 2014 and like September, I was in San Diego at this coach training. And I decided that this lawsuit is going to be the best thing that ever happened to me, even though I didn't know how. And so I made that definition of this. And what happened after that is my, my business partner who I worked with in my day jobs, but was also my business partner in the, the startup he was getting sued with me. We basically used his day job to funnel mar marketing funds from his tech company to my coaching business so that we could give ourselves money to pay attorney fees. <laughs> so that was actually where Jason Dries coaching started doing onsite workshops and things like that. So that was the foundation there that led to kind of my growth in onsite workshops in the Tony Robbins company, which expanded my income even more, which led to expand more and more. And 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 my big big lessons from that was really number one be careful who you do business with because i should have never done business with that investor even though they're throwing money at us money at us because basically that investor was married to the money and when they got divorced he threw us under the bus at her so he so he could get more cash out so she came after us like literally, oh he, he threw them at us, threw them at us. So, but the interesting thing is that my income dived for a six month period. And it got to a point where, you know, we had to, the attorneys were like file for bankruptcy to get out of this business lawsuit. And my income dived for six months, like literally just dived. So I passed the chapter seven means test. So I was able to qualify for chapter seven bankruptcy and wipe out all my debt. Um, and the month after that six month window, I made $50,000 in the next month. And, 
and we had so, a we and we had and we had a minivan, a town a town and country minivan. That when we bought it, I didn't have any money. This is when I was a broke coach, like in 2014. So I literally rolled my other payment into it. So I was paying two car payments on that one. So it was already in bankruptcy. It was already wiped off. So I'm like, I'm just, I'm going to stop paying it. I'm going to wait for them to show up and come take this one. And then I'm going to go down to CarMax and get another one. And oh, my cash payment, at that point. And, right? then, <laughs> and, then my, and then my payment would drop because at that point, it's already a bankruptcy. It's already charged off. Like um, the funny thing is like, the company didn't pick up that car with a repo for 14 months. What the flip? 14 Are you months. Serious. 14 months. So I kind of, a lot, once I decided the lawsuit was going to be a great thing, a lot of amazing things started to happen. So the frame that you operate in about what's going on actually determines the reality that you experience. And my business partner had a different experience and a different frame. So he had a different result than that than I did. And has, has your that business partner with that particular business um is how is he is he is he doing well today was he able to kind of you know turn it around learn from you or a little bit um but you know he's back in his he, he's got a job you know mm -hmm. back to the job thing he never went the entrepreneur route, entrepreneur route as much as me i think his wife won't let him talk to me after that yeah, right, right. I hear you. It's unfortunate. So, so unfortunately, we're not as close anymore. But I think it's, I, I think they're they're making payments for ten years to her. Okay. So, um, but there were their circumstances were different than ours. But that was that was my way out of that one. So, um, I'd help if I could. Um, yeah. He had the opportunity to file for bankruptcy too, but he chose a different path, right? Mm -hmm. But we were basically kind of stuck in this situation where we were past the promise past four years on a promissory note, but legal judges like attorneys were interpreting it as a negotiable instrument, not a promissory note. I'm like, what is that? So, oh but anyway, goodness. but, um, but anyway, it led to here. So be careful what you, who you do business with. And also you, your frame just say it's your reality. So whatever. So sometimes in a bad situation, giving it a powerful frame will create a radically different result down the line. And, and, you know, it's uh, that's so true because what typically humans will do is we're going to give it a really bad frame in that scenario. And that can take us for a long time, years, yeah. right? Um, you know, this is incredible. But, uh, you know, and, and what's what's amazing is in 2014, I was doing, you know, fire sprinkler design and yeah. making, I think, $14 an hour or whatever. While you were out there. You know, basically fighting for your life, but this is after, you know, financial mm -hmm. life, but this is after a huge leap of faith in getting into business, which mm -hmm. is just like such a beautiful thing. And I applaud you for that. And now, ha was there multiple business attempts after that or in between then and actually now where JDC is today? Yeah, there was a lot of business attempts. There was yeah. Channel Empowerment Shoe Solutions. There was, I had an outsourcing company in the Philippines that I ran for a year and a half. Uh, That's cool. Another business coaching company that wasn't under my name that didn't work. And everything kept failing um, until I started working with life. Because as I kept trying to force it and force it and force it, it just things didn't work. And I actually, in 2019, I literally gave up and I quit. I'm like, this doesn't work. Coaching isn't going to work. I'm going to go back and get a sales job. And I'm just going to be go back there. And then like, at, because I had I'd started a, a new business coaching company with three other people and me and another salesperson, me and a salesperson did marketing for five months and didn't close one coaching contract. And we're like, Clearly, I'm not supposed to be a coach. Um, but then as soon as I quit, in the next month, I had like four contracts, coaching contracts come to me off of referral. And my at inbound, they found they reached out to me and my head exploded. And and ever since then, it's been the process of uncovering like why when I was pushing so hard, I was creating lack of success because I was I was grinding, but I was not in alignment with it. So that's where I kind of figured that's kind of the entire journey of where we are today was really me dissecting how I've got here because the process of creating success um, is about always starts with aligning with it. It's not taking massive action. And, and that was the big lesson. I love that. And the dissection of, you know, how you got from there to success today and sharing that and mm -hmm. actually like um, through that, you know, dissection, you've actually proved that these steps or tools work yeah and um it's huge i've been i'm working on it as well 
and just a mindset stuff and, you know, through actually meeting people through your community that you created also, Mm -hmm. um, it's where I'm going to be in a few years is, you know, light years different from where I am today, all because Mm -hmm. of what I've learned from you. So, you know, I couldn't say it enough. We've got to be, um, learning and growing. And sometimes Mm -hmm. you find, you know, a great source of information for learning and growing. And absolutely. Um, you've, you've been that for me. So I just, I love it. I appreciate it. Um, let me ask you this, Jason, if if you were to be sent back in time to age 18, um, and you know, how would you fast track your success as far as how you define success? How would I fast track success as, uh, um, yeah, if you could have a conversation with yourself at age 18, what would you tell yourself like to get to where you want? To I, I would say, don't go to college. Don't waste your time. I'd say, go have fun. Because I went to college and I literally went to college for engineering because I was like good in science and math. And I went for three years and was like still a freshman because I was couldn't stop partying. <laughs> um, so I would have been just like, go get a job, make have money and have fun. You know, or I would say, like, if you want to go to college, like go study investment banking. But other than that, like start businesses, right? Stay at home and just start have fun and start businesses. So it would be like I'd be actually it'd probably be go have fun until you're done having fun. And then when you're ready after a couple of years, then start businesses one after the other and or go and become an investment banker. Like those were my ideas. I, I love it. Yeah. And, you know, uh for me, similar, I actually repeated my freshman year, I don't know, I think like five or six years and eventually just like stop. I gave up. Right. But yeah. Yeah. it's a similar thing. I was partying. And but what I wanted to ask you, uh, you know, in your youth, did you have times in your youth before you sort of um, got into the corporate world where, you know, like you've said in the past, we actually are taught to shut off our emotions and stop listening. Did you have times in your youth where you were listening to life and following your excitement? I think, I think I did a lot. Yeah. And, and it was, I remember junior high is kind of when I stopped that when, when I started having people realize like my seventh grade yearbook or was my eighth grade yearbook. Like if you read through my yearbook, most people in it said you're weird and you're strange. And, and I remember like uniquely being myself and being happy. Cause when I say follow, when you ask about following life, it's really like being yourself is really a big part of it. And I remember that was when I stopped being myself. Because that's when I realized being myself doesn't get the response out of other people that I wanted. So I started adapting it. And it took me like literally 20 years to come back. It's it's like social conditioning, disapproval from your peers. Yeah. It's powerful. Yeah. It is absolutely powerful, right? Yeah. And it, And it's funny because it's one of the things I do professionally is I connect people back to who they are. And I connect people back to Which their feelings. Which we all need. Which we all need. Yes. In a huge so, way. so when we're parenting our kids, we are extremely aware of we parent in a way that helps them be congruent with who they are. And it makes parenting hard when you do that, because parenting is much easier if you spank your kids and force adult behavior on them. Um, but if you allow the nurture them and honor all of their emotional experiences for what it is, it that you don't get control because you don't really have control, but it creates an internal congruence. So when, when you, you know, if you were interacting with one of my boys, one of the things I've noticed with them is they're, they don't question who they are. Hmm. They just know it. And I think that's one of the greatest gifts we can give our children is to have them be congruent with themselves because otherwise then you got to work with a life coach when you get older to get realigned. Yes. So, <laughs> so true. It may be like a therapist as well. Right. I actually was yeah. seeing a therapist. I'm kind of like, you know, so and anyways, yeah. um, and she actually was saying the same thing with yeah. our kids, yeah. you know, exactly how you just shared. And I mean, you know, honestly, um, <clears throat> I mean, th- there could be, you-, you could write a book on how to parent your kids mm-hmm. from, you know, the Jason G's way or whatever. And most of us can implement a few of those things mm-hmm. and like literally change the next generation. Yeah. Because it's so interesting what's been happening, like, you know, social conditioning and, and so on and so forth for so long that, mm-hmm. but uh, yeah, let me ask you this. This is a great, great question for Jason Drees right here. What yes. are your thoughts on mindset and how to go from a non-success mm-hmm. mindset to a successful mindset? And again, we all define success however we want to. Yeah. 
Well, the number one thing is that success is the starting point. It's not the destination. Um, because you receive what you are. And the reason I didn't create success in my first five businesses is because I believed I needed to work hard to create it. When you start from a place of success, when you start aligned with success, then that's actually what's going to happen. But most people think they're not successful until they get this simply by definition or by lack of results. So it's really start in alignment with the target will shorten the time frame to get it because the, the success will not happen until you're in alignment with it. So if you want to be successful, you have to start in alignment with success. And can you give us some, you know, cues, some things that we could be looking for if we are going to um, be operating from, hey, um, mm -hmm. what can we look for emotionally that would be indicate success? Well, you know, is like, are you operating in, in, in certainty? Like, yes, I am going to be successful even though I don't know how, because I'm going to keep going until I do. Like you can be committed and believe 100% that you're going to create success, even though you don't know how. By just choosing, I'm going to be successful because I'm not going to stop until I do. Um, so and it's that really- creates mystery and magic around it too. So we're it not does. like, it does. oh, this it is does. boring and it sucks and I do this and then this and plan and you know hit the goals. and. Yeah, well, it creates alignment is what it does. So it creates alignment and in that alignment comes the thoughts and ideas and therefore then the mindset that's aligned with the target that then creates the aligned action. Because we often think that action creates your reality, but in fact, reality creates your action. The reality you operate from determines what mindset you'll operate from. So literally the, uh, the reality you operate from determines the thoughts you will have, which determines if you'll think of an aligned or not aligned strategy to take an aligned or not aligned action. But the way our brains think is we think it's all action and strategy. So most people spend their time searching for strategy from a misaligned place. And, and this is high level stuff. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, thank you. And now right along with that, what I want to say is if we are not, and this is a question, if we are not, um, you know, authentically who we are, mm -hmm. how long are we going to be how are we going to be able to find that frame to operate from or are we going to i mean we're just going to be lost right spinning in circles until we can start to at least be um honest with ourselves and so we can be yeah yeah you could be lost although getting into alignment can happen just like you know just like that fast yes. so we can wander out there but as soon as you get into alignment it, it doesn't take that long to get in alignment and so, most people don't know how yeah no that's it and that's where like the world needs you. And, um, you know, what you have said in the past is that we can beat ourselves with a stick to get into alignment, or mm -hmm. we can just decide we can follow our emotions and negative emotions can be an indicator of we're out of alignment. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And one of the things I think that, you know, um, drew me to you and decided, um, you know, helped me decide where I just was like, this is unbelievable is, you know, your teachings on, um, you know, going from maybe a, that we can transform immediately. Mm -hmm. And I mean, this is what the world needs to hear that we can transform immediately. It doesn't yeah. have to take five years. We can do it in five months or five minutes, right? Yep. Yes. Change can happen in a second, like just like that. Love it. All right. That's great. <laughs> um, okay, cool. Let me ask you this, Jason. Now, if there was a key that unlocked or helped to unlock success in your life, um, you know, what would that be? Uh, if there was a key to unlocking success. Yeah. Well, I think it's the same. It's, it's the same principle we've been talking about is that alignment creates success, not action. So it's alignment with success creates success. Um, as opposed to massive action creates success. That's really the most powerful key you can, you can operate from. I love it. Yeah. Thank you very much. Now, mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of a little bit redundant, but it is good to get also, you know, multiple answers to kind of the same question and different perspectives, you know, so. Yeah, that's, sure. That's great. I love it. Um, mm -hmm. Can you give us one book recommendation and, you know, that you could share with us in one tech recommendation? Um, I'd say the book recommendation is my new book called Doing the Impossible, How to Do the Impossible. Doing the impossible. 
No, no, it's called Do the Impossible. Um, it's pop, you can actually find it right now, Bigger Pockets. It's on, you can actually buy it on Target. Um, it's, it'll be on Amazon in two months. Um, but you can actually pre order copies right now through Bigger Pockets. And I think that's the place. I didn't even realize it was released yet. It's not, it's in pre order. Okay. Yeah. It's supposed to ship in late February or March, something like that. And I saw the other day you shared you have a you you posted on a, a bigger pockets like it's a basically like an official bigger pockets post right so you're working closer with them yeah so bigger pockets Obviously. published the book um, <clears throat> there's a blog post I wrote there and I'm also on the in their new um, December January edition of the bigger pockets wealth magazine love it so that's uh, there's online there's actually some print copies of that too but um i have an article in there on seven steps to hit an impossible target mm -hmm. yeah it's very very good stuff i love it yeah um yeah. one tech recommendation that you tech have recommendation i'd say use less tech live your life more <laughs> that's a recommendation down. shut it off right <laughs> take a break love it perfect and um now jason how can our audience support you is there any particular type of deal or any way they can come to get to know you better um um well you could just you know you can follow me on instagram if you're interested in learning about mindset or go to jasondreescoaching.com there's a lot of different programs we have from from a group coaching program that's once a week to an intimate 10x group with other high performing entrepreneurs as well as live events so we're launching um, some new 10X groups, which is a combination of performance coaching, mindset, education and training, a peer group and community and mentoring and masterminding. So the next 10X groups are actually starting on January. So that's one of the ways that some clients are really accelerating in that program. Yeah, no, that's great. I love it. Yeah. yeah. Hey, um, and uh, you got a live event coming up this weekend, right? And so I'm going to, are the tickets sold out for that? No, tickets okay. are still available. I'm going to try to get this up tomorrow. And um, so you never know, right? Never know. But, uh, and, and if not, if, if you're watching this later, we typically do events every once every six months or once a quarter, depending on the timing. Okay, awesome. Mm -hmm. I love it. And, you know, again, as a, as a member of the JDC community and, you know, mm -hmm. uh, a customer of the Coaching and the Mindset Academy, thousand percent, don't waste any time, you know, ladies and gents, just get started today because literally um, it is life changing. Yeah. You do get out of it what you put yeah. into it, mm -hmm. um, but the opportunity is there. The tools are there. Yeah. So absolutely. All right. Well, uh, that's basically it. Thanks again, Jason. You're welcome. Just like, as I said, I'm not ashamed of it. I love you, dude. Like appreciate all that you've done and mm -hmm. uh, looking forward to, um, you know, growing and expanding and a lot more success with you. Awesome. All right, Doug. Thanks for having me on today. It was great to connect. Yeah. All right. Thank you. We'll Take touch care. base soon. Okay. Bye-bye. Right. Sounds great. Bye. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, another episode of The Gentle Art of Success. This was an amazing episode for me, and I sure learned a lot. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to listen or watch this video, uh, this episode. And please comment, like, or subscribe, uh, all three of them, if you feel uh, you know like that's something you want to do. Ultimately, know that I really appreciate you, and I only ask you for one thing, and that is to make this life magnificent. I hope your day is amazing. Thank you.